just woken up. I'm in my PJ, no judgment. Let me just come there. <laughs> None of you guys have really commented on how I do my daily makeup, but um, this is something that a lot of my co-workers have asked me. So if ever anyone in my real life <laughs> asks me how I do my everyday kind of makeup look, I shall refer back to this video. This is basically what I do on a daily basis. For some, it might be a bit much, but this is what I do on an everyday basis. And I guess we get started with our makeup look. This table is a mess right now. I have all my products just laid out and it's a lot. It's a lot. I forget how much I actually use. It's not a small amount. Um, I have to admit the lighting is not the greatest. Maybe I should uh, change locations? Nah. Okay, so my face ain't looking its best. I'm rambling on, so we'll get straight into the video. I first of all start off with a sunscreen. I'm not the very best at putting on sunscreen every day, and I know that I should. I'm trying to be good, so I have the Mecha Cosmetica to save face SPF 50 plus sunscreen. So it just looks like this. It's very simple. This is pretty much the sunscreen I use all the time. It's so nice. I find that this is such a nice sunscreen because it feels like a moisturizer. It doesn't feel heavy on the face. I don't know about flashback. I assume it doesn't have flashback. There's no white kind of casting. So yeah, it's one of my favorite sunscreen. I think this is my second bottle. I would recommend that sunscreen for sure. So right now I have these very like small sample size of the MAC Prep and Prime Natural Radiance Base Lumiere in Radiant Yellow. And then I have the Strobe Cream in Pink Light. I actually have a full size of this Strobe Cream, but I didn't want to crack into it before I used this sample size so I basically just mix the two I don't know if it does anything but I was using a different primer and it was getting like peely so I ended up switching to these two and it's been working well with what I use as my face um, so yeah I just mixed the two I just put it all over the face I'm sorry I'm a bit aggressive when I put on things if I'm going to work, I usually work a lot faster than this. We're going to move to the base product, the foundation, if you will. I think a lot of people have been reverting back to now like tinted moisturizers, something more natural. I have something very similar, which is the Clinique ID Dramatically Different Moisturizing BB Gel. This comes on its own. The BB Gel comes separately to, if you can see that orange bit. So that's like the hydrating gel or like the, the, oh my gosh, there's a fly in here. So annoying. Anyway, so that you can change to whatever skin type you are, your problem area. So I'm pretty sure I got the orange one, which was a hydrating base. So I have been using this a lot, but I think on its own, it turns like kind of orangey. So I like to mix this product with another foundation. This is pretty much a tinted moisturizer. It's not very high coverage. It pretty much is supposed to even out your skin, but when you squirt it out, it looks gray. Like it looks gray. It has some sort of weird technology where when you rub it on your skin, it changes color, but I'm going to mix it with this product, which is the Guerlain Lingerie de Pu. Is it Lingerie de Pu? I don't speak French. It has SPF 20, which is always great. It's always great to have more SPF, I suppose in your product so I'll just squeeze I don't know this amount but I pretty much just mix that this ain't the most professional way to apply but I kind of smear it on oh my gosh I just realized I have no mirror here I'm just winging it this is crazy I might have to just bring a mirror um, in a sec like excuse me but what am I doing I'm so I'm head Clearly, I'm not going to just leave it like this. I don't know if it looks like a mess. I can't really tell on the viewfinder. I'm going to get a mirror because I can't continue this video without looking at my face properly. Basically, I kind of smear it on my face like this. It looks crazy, I know, but I'm going to get a makeup sponge and, you know, blend it out. But for now, I need to wash my hands before I do that. And I need to bring a mirror because... <laughs> I 
fail at doing these sort of videos. Now I can truly see what I'm doing at least. Okay, so what I do next is I get this... <laughs> I'm embarrassed. This makeup sponge that I should have washed this morning. I did use it yesterday and it has been unwashed. What I do is I kind of just even out everything that I just apply with my hands. <laughs> On an everyday basis, I feel like the hand just is quicker. And also it kind of makes it a bit more natural. Oh my gosh, I forgot to bring concealer. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. I'm gonna go in with concealer. Oh, sorry, I forgot to show you what concealers I'm using. I usually use two. The first one is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Light Capturing Self-Setting Concealer. Don't know about self-setting, I set my concealer. It looks like this. It's the one that, you know, most people know the Ultra HD line from Makeup Forever. And then the other one that I have is the Becca Aqua Luminous Perfecting Concealer. This is clearly on its last few straws so it just looks like that so basically this i use on my problem area which there is one gigantic pimple here i don't know if you can see but if i shave it you can see it's huge it's one of those pimples that are under the surface and it's painful and should i be putting on makeup over this problemed area probably not but you know <laughs> We're gonna just cover that up. It's kind of a bit more matchy-matchy with my skin tone. And then I use this one, which is in the shade. Oh, sorry, the Becca one, I am in the shade. Man, that is very tiny. Oh, it says in the shade light, but it has more of a warmer undertone, so I use it on my face. The Ultra HD Concealer, I have it in the shade 25, and it's a lighter shade, hence why I use it for my under eyes. So you see those bags there. I have like permanent bags uh, due to my night shifts and probably late nights reading or watching YouTube videos which no regrets there but kind of regrets. <laughs> anyway I'm gonna just get a sponge and just blend that all in. Sorry I'm like hunching. I'm like a natural huncher so um Excuse me, and also I'm trying to look at the mirror. I don't know how to fix that. Guys, help me out here. How do you fix your hunching problems? <laughs> ah, so itchy. Bet you it's a piece of Sam's fur. Ah, I hate it when that happens. And his fur is like so fine that I can't find it. Oh, I see it, I see it. Okay, come on, come on. Oh, fine hairs, the bane of my existence, I swear. looking a little crazy right now. There's no dimension whatsoever. <laughs> it seems like I'm using a lot of sample products, but I swear I'm just trying to use this up. But this is the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. I got it from like a Mecca loot box. So I'm just using that. I kind of just use what's left on the lid. So I do this and give it a bit of a tap. And then I kind of just use that to set the under eye area. Anywhere that pretty much creases. So my smile lines here, a bit on my nose. Setting powder is done. So I get another like fluffy bigger brush. I don't do this all the time, but I do go into this Happy Go Dazzling Face Powder by MAC. This is from a Christmas collection a few years back. Um, I'm just gonna use it. It gives you a golden -y sheen on the face and I mix it with a normal translucent pressed powder. This is just in, what brand is this? Snow Beauty, it's a Japanese brand, Snow Beauty face powder. This is stunning by the way. For those of you who recognize this, it's a pretty old powder. I should technically get rid of it, but I can't. This powder has lasted me so long and I have yet to hit pan on it. I'm determined. This is the year, Project Pan. I will pan this bloody powder. Same with this one. Let me just be aggressive and just like dig into this, you know? Oh, that might have been too much. Okay, so basically I just lightly powder the rest of my face with this just because it gives like a nice golden sheen it's not so much a highlighter maybe if i do this here you might see it it might look like a goldeny highlighter but it really isn't it's pretty much a face powder and it does give you a golden sheen it's very subtle 
very subtle. I like to do that sometimes, uh, not all the time. If I'm in a rush, let's be real. I just use the loose powder and that's it. Moving on. We're gonna go into contour. I feel so accomplished because I do use the Kevin Aquan, what do you call this? The sculpting powder in the shade light. And it just looks like this, uh, if you can see that. I'm so proud of myself, but I have recently <laughs> hit pan on it. Yay! Do you see that? Do you see? That beautiful bit right there. I mix it in with the Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow. I just use the sculpting side, which is this one here. And I just mix that with the Kevin Aquan. I was using the Too Cool For School sculpting powder as well, but I have massively hit pen on that. I'm so proud of myself. Because I don't have a jawline. Gotta fake it. Gotta fake it. I kind of do like the hairline because I have a huge ass forehead as well. So let's just try to make that look smaller. You know, <laughs> I look crazy right now. So that is done. We're gonna go into. I forgot another thing. I forgot bronzer. I forgot bronzer. Let me come back. Or should I just do it later? No, no, I need to do it now. Okay, I'll be back. I swear this is the last thing that I forgot to bring to this room today. I swear. If I've missed anything else, yeah, I don't deserve to be on this platform. It's a pretty old bronzer, let's be real. It's the Clarins Aquatic Treasures Soleil Summer Bronzing Compact. It kind of looks like this, it's like divided into quarters. Yeah, I might have to chuck this one away soon, but usually I need to reserve this bronzer for the summertime because it's kind of on the orangey reddish tones. It gives you a bronze. Okay, so moving on to blush, my favorite. Um, I love blush. Um, so I have two blushes here. One, I am going in with this Hourglass. Oh my gosh, this is so dirty. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Palette. This was a holiday palette from a few years back and I feel pan on most of these products. The only thing is the two blushes. I feel so accomplished by this palette. I am so proud of myself. It's an old palette again. You know that this is the everyday makeup pile because I hit pan on a few things but pretty much I just go over the two colors like this tap the excess off a little bit on my nose I like that look even though some people are like your nose is red and I'm like it's on purpose and then this is a new product that I have and I'm obsessed with it's great for the summertime it's the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow in the shade Faded Clementine and it is this beautiful okay it doesn't look like much when you look at it like this it doesn't look that impressive but it's deceivingly more pigmented than you think so I just lightly tap it you know just lightly wow I've already got quite a bit of blush on but I'm just gonna go in with a little bit more so let's just tap on a little bit on the apples of the cheek and then a bit more on the nose We are almost done with our face products. My last, <laughs> this is also very dirty, oh my gosh. I have this mineralized skin finish in the shade Other Earthly by MAC. I don't know, do they still sell this? I'm sure they do, but it pretty much has three tones. It's got like a bronzy tone, a pinky tone in the middle, and then like this blue. I pretty much swirl around to all three. It looks like it's a baked product, but it's got this beautiful sheen that just melts into your skin and blends right in. Would I call this subtle? It's not very subtle, but it's not as high shine, but it blends in well. It reminds me of the hourglass highlighters where it kind of melts into your skin. It's there, you can see it, but it's also very blended out. So I kind of just add that to the cheekbone, the eyebrow bone around here, and then just a little bit on the nose. So yeah, that's where I highlight. We're gonna move on to, what should I move on to? The brows. Let's just get the brows out of the way because it's freaking me out. I used to just use like a brow pencil like this. This is the Anastasia Brow Definer in the shade Medium Brown. But recently I've been using a few other things. I have the Benefit Gimme Brow in the shade number four. This is like the mini deluxe sized one that I got from a set ages ago. And then I have the Shuramura. This was their collab with One Piece. It's so cute. So this is the Shuramura Hard Formula Eyebrow Pencil 
Soul in the shade Acorn. And this is very natural. I kind of use the Anastasia one to give a bit of definition. I kind of just do the lower line of the eyebrow, kind of shape it out the way I want. I just use the Shiromura one to fill in my eyebrows, but to shape it, it's not pigmented enough to shape the eyebrows. So I know these days people go for like the natural bushy eyebrow look, but let me just tell you, I don't have enough eyebrow hairs to do the bushy eyebrow look. I wish, I wish I could do that, but I can't. And then I connect the point there. Okay, so the shape is there now. <laughs> it looks funny because the light, again, <laughs> this side looks a lot more darker, but I swear they're kind of even-ish. Why does this side look so dark? Okay. Moving on. So getting the Shiromura one, I know, I know this is not what it's supposed to look like, but recently I went to Shiromura and I asked if they could like do the, the cut, you know, the iconic cut, because I don't know how to do that. And I don't want to ruin this pencil, but they said for hygienic reasons, because of course what's going on in the world, what we're going through, like the pandemic, they don't do that for people anymore because hygiene reasons, which I completely understand. So now I'm just going to have to use it like a normal pencil. Anyway, so I kind of fill the eyebrow in even though it looks very full in the viewfinder. Uh, you guys are probably thinking you're crazy. You're feeling it even more in crazy. I know, but I swear in real life, it does not look as dark as it does there. Whoa, it looks really dark. And then I go back to the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow definer. I go to the spoolie side. I basically just comb out the eyebrow hair and it kind of blends in the two, I think. It's a process. I feel like the eyebrows take the longest. I usually get the gimme brow after that and then I just give a bit more because, you know, like I said, I don't have a lot of brow hair to work with. So I've got to pretend that I have somewhat of an eyebrow. It's pretty much like a tinted gel and then I kind of comb it out again. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. Like I legit woke up, washed my face, brushed my teeth and I was like, okay, I'm going to make a video today. I might as well just do my everyday makeup look because I have nothing else to do during the day today. I am going to my brother's place for dinner tonight, so I do have that, but I had no other plans. So I decided that I will, it's my day off. First of all, I had no other plans. So I was like, I'm gonna make a video. You know what, before I do anything, I'm just gonna put lip gloss on my lips. This is not gonna be the final lip. I'm just gonna put some on cause my lips feel a little bit dry. I'm using the oil infused lip tint in the shade Orgasm by NARS. This is a beautiful lip gloss, by the way. I think cause it is an oil tint, it does feel a lot nicer. It feels very hydrating. Anyway, moving on. Oh my gosh, I just realized the blend on my jawline is not very nice. Okay, usually I would get my foundation brush and kind of just buff in any harsh lines here, but of course I forgot to bring that and I am done with walking in and out of this room. I'm just gonna use my, my fingers and just like blend it out, sorry. Not sorry. Okay, last thing I'll do before moving on to the eyes is just setting my face. So I am using the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. One of my favorites, oh my gosh. So it kind of looks like this. I just shake it a bit. This has got to be the finest, most beautiful mist ever. I don't know if you, you can see this, but... <gasps> you can see it! Oh my gosh, did you see it? It's so fine, the mist. I, I love it. Anyway, I use this to just like set everything, bring everything together, melt all the powders that I've used together. So I just set my face. so nice it smells so good this is one of my favorite it brings everything together your face feels a little dry you spritz some of this on you're rehydrated it's beautiful it smells great it makes you feel good i love the brand clear recipe we're gonna get to the eyes because i have a lot of questions not here but surprisingly a lot of people from my life want to know how i do my eye look so i'm gonna do the eye look today <laughs> the one that i usually do every day so i have a few palettes here that i'm gonna dip into in and out of so first of all of course the modern renaissance palette by anastasia beverly hills this one has been in my 
collection probably the longest and I've been using it for probably the longest. I have actually hit pan on two of the eyeshadows which is this one here in the shade Golden Oak and Raw Sienna. So those two I've hit pan on. I have a feeling that I'm gonna hit pan on Tempura soon and Burnt Orange. So pretty much the only shades that I use are these four shades here and occasionally I'll dip into that orange shade in Real Gar and Red Ochre. So besides that, all the other colors are pretty untouched. Yeah, I'm pretty much keeping the Modern Renaissance solely to hit pan and use up those four shades completely. And then when I do, I can finally move on and just chuck this palette out. The next palette I have is another one that's been in my collection for quite a while now, but I want to use it up. It's quite a beautiful palette actually. So this is the Tartlet in Bloom palette and it looks like that. The shades kind of look like that. It's a very cool tone neutral palette but I usually use this solely for these two darker shades here so the shade in Activist and Leader and I kind of mix that to put over my eyeliner and kind of define the eye look a little bit but I do occasionally do use the transitional shades these three over here. The shimmer shades are really nice too so this is an all over nice palette for every day. The third palette I'll be going into is the Nubian by Juvia's Place. This is their original one that they got hyped up for. It's their neutral palette. It's got all these warm tones and I recently dug into this one. I've owned it for a while now but I didn't really use it as much but I'm telling you these two shades the middle top two perfect transitional shades beautiful gives off the best kind of in fact you know what let's start off with those um, shades I'm just gonna go into the second shade <laughs> I don't know what it's called it doesn't have shade names but let's just go into it Juvia's place I have to tell you has pigment you don't need to do much you just dip in a little bit and look at that oh sorry it's not fully blended out excuse me look at that it's so beautiful you know what do I even need to dig into the modern renaissance palette I don't know, I don't think so, but for the sake of this video, let's just use both palettes. So I'm just gonna dig into the Modern Renaissance. I'm gonna go in between the three shades, Golden Ochre, Raw Sienna, Burnt Orange. I'm just gonna go between the three and mix it in. Tap, tap. I cleaned this yesterday. I'm so happy and proud of myself. So this is a clean blending brush. I usually use this brush to blend out the, the rest of the eyeshadow. So there's no harsh lines. It works best when you use a clean blending brush. So always have like a clean one ready to go to like just blend out and diffuse. So it looks like it just kind of melts and fades out. So there's no harsh lines. I do usually fill out the bottom lash line here as well. So I now have a brush that kind of is angled a bit like this. Anything that's slightly angled like this and kind of thin will work. So I just go into again the three shades from the Modern Renaissance palette and I just dip into all three. Tap tap. So now I'm just gonna go into Real Gar, dab a little bit and Red Ochre. Just dab a little bit, tap the excess off and just do the outer side because I know this is gonna get a little bit pigmented. All right, now I'm just gonna go into another blending brush. I know, this is a lot, I'm sorry. Just gonna go into Rigar and Red Ochre again. Tap, tap a little bit. I'm just gonna darken out the outer side. There we go. We are getting some shadow, okay. So again, with the clean blending brush, I just blend out the bottom there. Okay, once that's done, I just blend out the outer bit I just added on so it kind of like I said diffuses the eyeshadow look so there's no harsh lines oh my gosh I need to pluck my eyebrows let's just ignore that fact okay so there we go I do like to add a bit of shimmer not every day you know sometimes if I'm just going to work not going to a nightclub you know so um, not that we can go to nightclubs anymore not that I ever do go to a nightclub 
called? Okay, I gotta stop. Yeah, sometimes I like to add a bit of shimmer to the look. Sometimes I just leave it like this. Today, I kind of want to do a little bit extra. I've got a few like single shadows. First of all, I've got Misha. It's so cute because it has like a little paw print on it. It's in the shade MRD02. And it's one of the matte single shadows. It's kind of like this corally color. And I pair it with another Misha shadow that looks like this. And it's kind of like a shimmery shade. One of the Glitter Prism shades. And I'm sorry, it's in Korean. I'm Korean, but I can't read Korean. So this is the shade. <laughs> I don't even use a brush anymore. Day to day, you're in a rush. Just use your fingers. I just tap into that and just, you know, put a little bit on. And then I'm gonna go into the shimmer shade, the glitter prism. Pretty much, this is like a glitter topper. I don't know if you can tell, but... Can you see the glitter? Gosh, you can see the texture on my um, face, that's for sure. Okay, so you can see the corally color, right? It's gonna shade that. You can kind of see the corally color. I don't know, not the best lighting situation, but I hope you guys can forgive me. I've got only so many places that I can film in this house, so... I really like these glitter prisms. This is a little extra, but I wanted to add it in. This is the Urban Decay. It's one of their space single eyeshadows. I don't even know if they sell this anymore, but this is seriously one of my favorite eyeshadows. It's in the shade Solstice, and it's pretty much like a glitter topper. It doesn't look like much when you look at it like here, but when you put it on, I hope I never run out of this. If they truly have discontinued it, I'm so sad. I'll just put it on top. It's like the most beautiful eyeshadow topper ever. It's got like a purpley lavender base, but it also has like a blue tone, purpley shimmer. It's stunning. It's beautiful. I don't know if you can tell in this lighting. Just trust me. It's one of those beautiful shades. <laughs> and I'm so sad if they actually discontinued this line of eyeshadow. I, I pretty much give up. Cause I was like, I'm not done. I need to do the eyeliner and I forgot the eyeliner. I swear once I get the eyeliner and the mascara, that's it. I'm not getting out of this chair again. <laughs> okay, this requires a little bit more concentration. This is going a bit overboard, but I've got three liners here. Two are from ColourPop. The two ColourPop eyeliners I have are the cream gel liner. One in the shade Sunny Veil, which is kind of like a dark brown. And then one in the shade Mr. Bing. Not my favorite. It probably has dried out a little bit. It's not as creamy as Sunny Vale. And then I have a Marc Jacobs Fine Liner in Ultra Skinny Gel Eye Crayon in the shade Fine Wine. This is a burgundy shade. We're gonna go in with Sunny Vale. One of my favorite daily eyeliners. So basically what I do, I need this mirror close to me when I do this. Okay, so I kind of just like line it to the middle bit. I don't go all the way in. And then I kind of wing it out a little bit. And then I just do that. It's like a very subtle wing. And also I just, um, I recently started doing this. I used to be very uncomfortable with, but I do fill in the, what do you even call it? The waterline, the upper waterline. I forget what it's called. There we go. So what I do then is get Mr. Bing. Like I said, it's not as creamy and pigmented. Maybe it's dried out or something, but yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of this shade and I probably will not repurchase it. But it is good for being a little bit more uncoordinated, I suppose. But I do use this in the inner corner just slightly, just to give a bit more dimension to my eyes. And then I kind of subtly join that eyeliner with where I left off with Sunny Veil. I don't know if it's just my one that's kind of dried up a bit. Maybe I just have a dud. But I appreciate the dud because it allows me to just be rough with my eyeliner and not so perfect. With Sunny Veil, I have to be very careful because it is pigmented. And I have to be more careful with this Marc Jacobs eyeliner. By the way, super creamy. Probably one of my favorites. I do have a darker brown shade of this. This one is one of those eyeliners where you twist up, but you can't twist back down. So you've got to be careful. So pigmented and so creamy that I use it to just 
look i don't do this all the time but sometimes i go into a darker eyeshadow and i just kind of set the eyeliner with it like i said before i'm gonna go into the two dark shades here so activist and leader by the way i use like an eyeliner angled brush and just carefully trace where i have already got eyeliner and this kind of just defines the eyeliner a bit i just realized i have to do the other side I'm sad about it. I'll be right back in one second. Okay, so the other eyeliner is done. It's amazing how fast I can do the eyeliner without talking. The eyeliner is actually um, a lot more cat-eyed, a lot more intense than I usually do when I go to work every day. Oh my gosh, I just realized I didn't tight line the upper waterline on this side. So let me just quickly do that. Today, I think I went a little bit overboard. So I've got two mascaras here. First one I have is the Marc Jacobs Velvet Primer. Sometimes I don't even use this because the hassle of it being like a peachy shade to it, I miss it with my black mascara and then I have like a little bit of like a white lash showing and then the next one that i have is the caution extreme lash mascara by hourglass again it's a deluxe sample size i'm just kind of using this up i think this one's almost out like i feel like i'm not getting a lot recently but this is the mascara i use pretty much every day it's not clumpy but it's lengthening so sorry my battery ran out but yeah the hourglass caution mascara is nice it doesn't transfer it doesn't give you panda eyes at the end of the day pretty like like subtle it's not extreme clumpy it kind of does feather out the lashes a bit but it gives you a bit of length and i like it it's one of my favorites and i just realized i don't know if you can see but there's like a bit of that lash primer that i missed i feel like on this side because i'm right-handed i can get all the lashes but it's this side that i struggle with oh no i got mascara on my eyelid no i hate it when that happens yeah sometimes i i honestly can't be bothered to use that primer because it ugh. <gasps> i don't know if you can see that but that is no i've never done that before oh my gosh ah, i ruined my eyeshadow look no uh, how do i fix that i've never had that happen to me before <gasps> Oh, you can see it now. Oh my gosh, I ruined the shadow. Oh no. There could have been an easier way to avoid this tragedy. Let me just wash my hands for a second and try to fix this. We're just gonna move on like that didn't happen. I guess the last thing I do now is the lips. I'm just gonna use, again, three. I tend to like to use three products, it seems. So I have MAC Velvet Teddy, which is a classic. I don't see a lot of people using it anymore. But I do like the Fenty Mademoiselle lipsticks. One of my favorite shades from this line is in the shade Single. It's the perfect nude color. I don't know if you can see that. Can you? Can you see that? But yeah, I, I just use this to top off Velvet Teddy. This is pretty much the lip combo that I use on the daily. I could leave it at that, you know, as a neutral nudie look. But what I've been liking is using this lipstick from Shuramura. This is also probably a little bit old now because you can tell it's the Mario collection from a few years ago. I mean, if I haven't had a bad reaction on my lips, I guess it's still good, right? It's from the Rouge Unlimited Supreme Matte line. And it's in the shade M O R. It's pretty much a red shade as you can see it's a bright red but I use it very sparingly and just dab it onto my lips to give like a wash of a ready tone and it mixes in so beautifully with the other two shades that I use. I do kind of like the gradient lip a little bit um, so I kind of get the corner of it and put a bit of pressure like that and under. If I feel like it's a bit too much, I guess people use like Q-tips or whatever to be a bit more careful, blend out that outer line. But everyday look, you're in a bit of a rush. You just use your fingers. You just use what you have. And that is it, guys. 
Oh gosh, my hair is a bit crazy. I have not brushed it out. It's a very normal kind of look. I have a feeling that my camera is slightly washing me out now. So I'm going to go and do a close up shot for you guys. I'm going to get changed and I'll be right back. <laughs> Let's be real, I'm still wearing my pajama pants, but look, I gotta look like I've made effort, you know? <laughs> to get changed into something at least and not my pajamas. So this is it, this is the finished look. This is kind of the close-up of what my look looks like. My hair's a bit a mess, sorry about that. But I know from the angle that I was filming at before was not very accurate, I suppose, because the sun was really shining on one side and then one side was very dark. But if you look at it now, it's kind of hopefully more even and hopefully you get a better look at what it looks like overall. So yeah. This is my look. My face is not fully covered. I mean, you can still see that beast popping out. But usually on an everyday look, I don't go for the full coverage look. And this is pretty much like if there is a few blemishes that show, I don't really care. Like it's not the end of the world for me. Unless it's a very obvious pimple like on my nose or right here or somewhere very obvious. I will try to cover those. But otherwise, if it's like on the cheek key or something, I don't really care about it. So this is the look. It's definitely nothing too exciting, but Good look. I hope you guys enjoyed. It's the look that I go to pretty much on the daily and yeah, this is it. This is how I look every day. <laughs> I gotta stop myself. I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.